and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be working on my discovery one with a 200 tdi we're going to be doing a little maintenance we just went up the greek peak to uh courtland new york and it was about a six hour drive one way and the other way back which is roughly about 300 350 miles or so like that or longer but um she drove perfect wonderful the whole way there and the whole way back no issues whatsoever she got a little warm on some of the big hills here in pennsylvania but not too bad at all so it's getting about time for an oil change so i found a big old jug of oil on uh my shelf in the garage and i have a filter so we're going to change the oil today and we're also going to be setting the valves up here or whatever you know the set your valves so I would I do mine a little bit different so stay tuned and we'll see how it is and see how it goes so I took the oil cap off up off the engine got my one in one eighth socket and loosen her up I like to hold the hold it up a little bit because it's up pretty high just so I can get underneath there easily. There you go. Woo! Oh, I spilled it everywhere. All right, so I got this nifty old tool from the 80s. I got it a long time ago. From the 90s i guess but it's a universal filter wrench let's see if we can get this to spin there today without having to do anything crazy i put the filter on last time so it shouldn't be too tight there we go Let's see if I could do this without making a complete mess. I'm good at spilling it all over myself. What a mess. Oh, come on. I don't know if you guys do this, but do you guys fill up your oil filters? Just a little pre-oil. I like to get it filled up a little bit, almost like three quarters of the way before I install it, just so it gets a little bit of oil inside there. Do any of you guys do that? Let me know down in the comments. All right, we got our filter here. I'm gonna try in coming in from the top instead of the bottom, because it's a complete mess down there. Probably should have took it off from that side too. Holy moly, what a mess. But I put it on there just the same as anybody else does. And just spin it on there and got her snug. Like three quarters of a turn. So we got the oil filters now on. The drain plug is now on. So before I start dumping oil down into the crank and I start getting a mess in here, I'm going to take off the valve covers Valve cover, and we're going to set the valves next. All 
then you need a little you use a socket on these ones it's an eight you got to use a little short stubby one back here get back underneath here Every time I do this, I always forget I need to disconnect this every time. So I took the crankcase hose off. Take that bottom hose clamp, loosen that up. That should come off. Oh, and that one too. See, I always forget all these little things like that. Don't forget, don't forget not to lose these things that go into the top, into your air cleaner here. Not your air cleaner, your valve cover. Okay, so we got the valve cover off. Now you can see this is the number one piston here. And we're right now we're at the exhaust stroke right now. So we want it to be uh, at top dead center. I know in the book it tells you to do one and eight. Well, number one's open the whole way and number eight's closed and then so on. Number two and number seven, number two when it's open. Or what is it open the whole way and number seven will be open will be open and now it'll be closed and so on and so on but we're not doing it this way we're gonna do it like ger all the German cars I've ever done is uh, always set it at top dead center and I did it before at top dead center and it's working good it works good but I'm gonna show you today my tricks that I did to get the to make it a little bit easier so let's go back so we're at the exhaust stroke right now so the next one will be the intake stroke and then uh then we'll be at top dead center so i'm going to rotate the engine around uh down at the crank to get there okay. so we're down here underneath here's a nut on the end of the crank then i got a 30 millimeter wrench i'm going to take it and rotate the engine here and uh, the truck is in the truck is in neutral so let's rotate this around I rotated the engine all the way around and I was mistaken I was saying that this was the intake valve this is actually the exhaust valve so don't mistake that as the intake or whatever because you could see the exhaust port over here with uh, the exhaust so over here I rotated the engine a few times watching for whenever uh, each one was firing and going along watching the valves and then until this one was at top dead center and to see top dead center to confirm it what you do is you take it you see how you can wiggle you can film wiggle up and down so this one's at top dead center and the other ones this one wiggles but this one doesn't <laughs> And what's that number two right here this one this one wiggles and this one doesn't so this one wiggles and this one doesn't so you know that's not there and back here that one doesn't wiggle and that one doesn't wiggle either so none of these wiggle only the instead of both of them wiggling only one of them wiggles so you know none of these are right but when this one wiggles and wiggles you know you're at least close to top dead center but to confirm you're at top dead center down here there's i don't know if i'll be able to see that but you can see i painted oh, get the flashlight in there there you go you can kind of see there you see the orange mark on the on the the aluminum cover the the housing cover down there 
You can see that down there. And then you can see TDC with a line that I wrote with a marker with a paint pen. So I can able to see it real easy. So we're at top dead center and we're lined up with that mark. We're good, okay? So for a quick reference for down underneath, whenever I'm cranking around, so I know I'm about close to top dead center, this is what I do. Let's go down underneath. Oh. All right, so down underneath here, I have B, BTDC, which would be the, whoops, let's see what focuses, there you go. The BTDC, which would be the bottom top dead center. So what I do is I make a mark here with a paint pen. Just, I had to clean it up. It was actually kind of worn out with the, the oil and dirt and stuff on it. So I made a fresh mark on there, but I cleaned it up and put a fresh mark. So what I do is as I'm rotating this down here, I can't see the top of the engine. So what I'll do is I'll rotate the engine and I'll come here and I'll line up the BTTC down here with that mark that I made over here. So then it gives me a reference from down underneath the car so I don't have to keep getting up and looking up at the top all the time. So, let me see, I don't know, is there actually a mark for bottom Ted center or did I mark that on there? I must have marked that on there at some point a long time ago. Well, whenever I took the pulley off and did the timing belt, that's whenever I marked that, the top dead center. I did a, uh, the circumference and got to the center of it. If you could do that later on, whenever you're doing yours or if you're working on something to get you your bottom dead dead center. So, okay, I babble in on here. So, okay, so as I'm cranking around, I can see that I'm there. Now we go to the top and then we're lined up. So we're at top dead center up here. Let me go get the feeler gauge and let's see how it goes. Okay, so here we are. Got the camera set up. So I got a feeler gauge. It's 0 .008 inches or 0.2 millimeters thick. The repair manual says 0.2 millimeters. So this is what I got here. So you got a flathead screwdriver in case you need to adjust the top and 13 millimeters to break open the, the lock nut if you need to. So let's take a feel and see how they are. So what I like to do, slide underneath there, and I kind of wiggle it back and forth. I slide the, this underneath and it's kind of, you could kind of feel a little bit of snugness, but it's not really tight. It's kind of smooth going through there. And then just to see to make sure that it's not loose, I go like this and I'll wiggle back and forth. And it, that one's pretty good, it's straight on. Oh, that one feels good too. That's actually right on. So number one is good, so there's no reason to adjust it. But if you did, I'm gonna go through all the rest of them and I'll come back and if I have to adjust one, actually adjust one, I'll come back and show you. Here, before I start turning it, I'll show you what, what I do here. Go down underneath, and also this is a 200 TDI. I don't know if I even mentioned that. So you rotate it by hand. If I can get the wrench on there. All right, so I was having wrench difficulties here. So here we go. So now we're down underneath and before we we're at top dead center. So then we want B bottom top, top dead center at the top. So I'll rotate here down the bottom and I'll get it, eyeball it and line it up with my mark. About, uh, looks about right, right there. So let's go up on top of the truck and let's see it's how close it is to alignment at the top uh, there you can kind of see if you could see there let me see if i can zoom in all right you can see there uh, the bottom top dead center bottom top dead center is lined up with that mark on the housing cover so i think that's pretty good 
And you can see there, yeah, it lines up pretty good. So see how the marks work down the bottom and at the top? And then you don't have to guess so much whenever you're doing it. So let's go up onto the top here. Let's see what we're firing at here. Which one we got? It should be, is it one, one, three, four, I think? All right, number three. See, number three is wiggling up and down. So right, number three is good. We're at top dead center. And let's check the rest of them just to make sure. This one, tight. Uh, a little bit loose, but still that one's tight. These two are loose. That's number three. Number two, tight, tight. So you know those aren't right. That one's loose and that one's tight. So you know that one's not right. So one, two, and four don't seem right. So number three, it must be number three then, right? So number three is at top dead center. Let's get our feeler gauge. Do a quick feel underneath. Maybe it would sit there for a sec. Give it a wiggle. That nah, feels pretty good. No play in it. And I'll take the other one. Uh, that one has a little bit of play in it. So we'll adjust this one here. You can see here, the feeler gauge is underneath there. And it has a little bit of play up and down. So we're going to take that play out on here. So take your 13 millimeter, crack the, the bolt loose, your lock. And you kind of tighten it down. When you turn the, hold your screwdriver there a little bit, then loosen it up a little bit this way. Your lock nut, because it starts bottoming back out again. There you go. It still has a little bit of play in there. Yeah, it's only a little minor adjustment, so it's not a whole lot. You're not doing a whole lot here. Okay, so we got it good. This slides out nice and easy. Not too hard. Well, maybe just a smidge. I'll move it a smidge out. Yeah, there you go. There you go there. Doesn't have any really play back and forth at all. So you, I like to leave the adjuster in there and I'll put the sock, put that onto there. Then kind of lock it down. And it doesn't have to be crazy tight. It's just enough to keep it so it doesn't move around. So it's still smooth. And not, that, that's pretty good. So again, there you go. So that's how you adjust the valve if it needs to be adjusted. Okay, so she's all done. Got oil in her. Checked it, filled her up. Nothing's leaking. I don't see anything leaking. The valves are set. So let's give it a start up. There you go. The oil lights out. So we're good. So thank you for watching. Like, subscribe. You guys are awesome. Stay awesome. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.